There was initial scepticism about them because they were not natural, they had not been developing in the Earth's crust over millions of years. Um, but now the appetite for lab-grown diamonds is clearly growing. Uh, there is rising consumer demand for lab-grown diamond jewellery in the world. We're seeing this in markets such as the United States and the United Kingdom. Um, there are good structures in place for um, proper uh, ethical production of, of uh, lab-grown diamonds, particularly where green energy is used in their manufacture. Um, and we have seen a strong increase in the manufacturing of lab-grown diamonds uh, in countries such as India um, to meet this growing demand. It doesn't matter whether it's born above Earth or born under Earth. In the end, the product is the same. It's called a diamond. It is a diamond. It will always be a diamond. And this is a diamond which is for everyone, right? So what we are trying to do is, there are people who are, you know, hoping, wishing that they could once buy a diamond and they're working really hard. And uh, now there's a chance. Everyone can buy a diamond and a diamond for everyone. Right now, the industry is almost like seven to nine percent of the entire industry between natural and lab grown, and it's growing every year. Every year, it's growing five percent, ten percent. So, we we my estimation is by the end of 2030, it will be a 50-50 industry for natural and lab grown. <laughs> It can always be determined whether a stone is a diamond or a laboratory grown diamond, just sometimes it's easier than other times. Sometimes you can tell just by looking at it, other times you might need advanced instrumentation, but they can always be separated. The implications of not being able to identify a natural diamond or a laboratory grown diamond is that these are different products. Misidentification leads to an incorrect value put on these stones. And that is a big problem because the value between these two products are completely different. So that could actually lead to losing money and also losing your reputation if you ever get it wrong. In the last five years, and, and even more so in the last three years, probably, um, 
there are just more and more uh, producers of it and more and more designers and manufacturers using lab-grown diamonds, including people who at one time would have said they wouldn't touch them with a barge pole, either selling them or producing them, and are now having to really, uh, well certainly consider it, because they're here to stay. When they first came into my world to be valued, you know, quite some years ago, it, it really was quite a, a disturbance. <laughs> um, but now, you know, they are very much more accepted. It's the way it's going. Um, how do I value it? Yes, I, I value it like I would value any other gemstone. The, a synthetic diamond has all of the same physical properties as a natural stone, but it's out of the laboratory rather than out of the ground. Is a lab-grown diamond going to be an investment right now? Absolutely not. You know, we, it's only historically we can see the prices are dropping. Um, they're very substantial in the beginning, but now it is tapering off. But no, I'm quite sure they will continue to, to, to lose value. Thank you.